to, first of all, you're so young in your marriage, put God first. Mm -hmm. Don't let anything come between the two of you and um, God as your center. Nothing. Let nothing. And don't take these words lightly. And something I'm going to tell you, Josie, that my mother, or my husband's grandmother, she gave me as a wedding gift 40 years ago. She said, I'm going to give you the best wedding gift, <laughs> and that's learn to keep your tongue behind your teeth. Yeah. And you know what? To this day, as a woman, we can just, you know, put a guard across the, the Bible verse to put a guard over your mouth. Yeah. I say that to the Lord all the time. Put a guard <laughs> over my mouth, Lord, because us women, we can just be a little too out there. Mm -hmm. And she knew that, and I'll tell you, it's the best advice that I ever got. Is as a, um, because my husband's a man of very few words. Yeah. And men usually are. But um, us women can, with our words, really destroy a man. Mm -hmm. We can. And she knew that, and I thought that was wonderful advice. So, anyways. I just wish you guys safe travels, and the card I gave you, gave, I have all kinds of... Um, Protection. Yeah, Bible verses to protect you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, wow. travels, just pray those verses, um, apply them to you as your tra on your travels. I can't remember, you know, I didn't memorize them, I copied them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I really appreciate that. Sandy. I love you guys, and I'm going to keep it, track of you on Facebook. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like Facebook, I keep track of everybody. I know. <laughs> See what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they will bury you up so you won't dash your foot against a stone. And um, I just picture the angels surrounding you in your trip and in your new life. And the fact that you found a place you can afford and they'll take your dogs and you've got to transfer. You know, when the doors all open. Yeah. But um, there will be times after the first month because I moved 26 times. Wow. There will be wow. times after the first, I had an alcoholic cousin that liked to move. So I had wow. this problem, I think. But anyway, um, after the first rush and the excitement, about the end of the second month, you go into this culture shock. Like there's a natural term for it. And, and everything bothers you. Like everything's different. I don't know where to find this or that that I'm mm -hmm. used to getting and mm -hmm. I you know I miss my my normal friends and routine and my step study and my CR and everything uh -huh. we haven't found church maybe whatever but yeah. you go into culture shock about two months so just know that that's normal and it's not forever you get over it wow. you know it's just change Good change advice. is hard yeah. Because I, I spent a semester in England, and they told us about it, and we were all looking, and like, really? This is too much fun. We're not going to have it. Uh -huh. you know, and after about two months, we're like, we're tired of the food. We're tired of the not knowing what to do. You know, like <laughs> the weather. You know, whatever it is that you're used to, like wearing flip-flops mm -hmm. all year round, or whatever. Yeah. You go, now, this is just not what I'm used to. So when that happens, just stick close together and comfort each other like you still have each other mm -hmm. you know and even if you're going through this shock you know of all this change it'll pass mm -hmm. and then you'll get used to it and you'll know where everything is and you'll begin to see it balance out mm -hmm. so that's my advice thank right. you Beverly yeah. sure. lunch with it yeah. coffee coffee that's right <laughs> yeah. that was very nice <laughs> and this was another time Mm, yeah. Yeah, and I thank you for reaching out to me. You're a very nice person. Oh, mm -hmm. she is that. I've mm -hmm. been watching you both grow in Christ, and um, and I love watching your adventures on the um, Facebook. Your hikes. <laughs> I feel like I'm there with you when you yeah. <laughs> And um, I I think it's amazing that um, I'm not sure where Kevin's from, but um, but that you're willing to go where your husband, or you know, you're both willing to go on this adventure together. Because um, I happen to have been the, like this mainstay of my family, mm -hmm. and so I probably hindered some of our growth along the way. So I just think <coughs> that um, that is exciting, and I know that um, God.
us going and preparing for you guys already ahead of time for you. And um, I, uh, I don't know, I just look forward to continue watching you guys continue to grow and grow together. And um, I remember um, when I first met Josie and um, it just, God's done mir miraculous things in your life. And um, you're both very inspiring to me. And um, I'm gonna miss you, but I'll say hi on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And uh, anyways. Thanks, Linda. I love you both. Love you too. Yeah. Thanks. Amen. Josie, you've been like a, like a daughter that I never had. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. when you first, first met you, you were very, very young, you're still young today, but, but you're a very young, young, young girl, and um, I, I saw you go through some down times, really hard times, and um, I prayed for you, and, and asked God to protect you from whatever you mm -hmm. have to walk through, and, and I, today, you know, I just see a miracle right in front of my eyes, I see a miracle, mm -hmm. and I, heaven, you know, you were the person that walked into her life and God provided her with a man of God. And I'm grateful for that, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I saw her just, you know, lost for the longest time and I uh, invited her to church, CR, you know, and, and just let God just do his mighty work, you know, and he did. And I, and I just am so grateful and thankful that God had. You know, made a new person, created yeah. a new person in him, and that Kevin is the man that is there beside you, and that uh, my, I don't want to say advice, it's my, my prayer is that you would just stay connected to each other, with God in the center of it all, you know, and uh, just don't, you know, <coughs> walk away, you know, go to God first, and ask him for whatever need that you may have, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You're not alone. And in my card, I, I gave you a, this little um, bookmarker mm. that Jeremiah 29 11. Oh, I know I have it. Pastor 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 my picture. And so, you know, and that's what I want from you to be prosperous. You know, and not to, be, not to go without. Because mm -hmm. God is there to provide for whatever need that you may have. And I just wish you the best. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And the same thing can just go over to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. Thanks. And I'll read, those card, I'll read those cards and, mm -hmm. and stuff after, too. Life mm -hmm. abundance. It's just um, a little something. It can weather all kinds of weather, you know, the heat. And, you know, but just, just something to remember us by. Because all of, you, all of the people that have chosen to be here tonight, and even the ones that left, have always been there for you. You know, God put them and designed it for you to be touched by them. And you have the tools, you know, and, and um, I've watched you work the program and you know, you had one, you had a slip and you got right back into action. So I know what, yeah, I know you know what to do. I know you know the answer. And, um, and then you met a godly man, Kevin, and I remember that you were attracted to him because of, you know, his godliness. That was one of the main things I remember you telling me about. He just loves the Lord and, mm -hmm. you know, and then of course he's a vegan and he's handsome and, you know, <laughs> and he works out and <laughs> those all help too. <laughs> God, God does, works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so that just, can you guys can take that with you and remember us when you see your little plant. Yeah. And then I brought you a little life kit and so it has oh. little things for you <laughs> to know that you're being nurtured and that you you know this represents all of uh the beauty and and the things that that you know we as as the group we just are a part of that and so you need your little beauty kit and you have a, Bill and i have a card for you 
And you know, we just to stay oh, in the word. Yeah. Like a rock? So Kevin, this one is oh, for you. Pretty. It's a James Code, 52 scriptural principles for putting your faith <laughs> into action by um, Hawkins. Oh, and nice. So this will be a good book for you Can't wait as to a read spiritual it. leader of the home. And nice. you're the one that God will use to to lead and guide, you know. And then so for awesome. Josie, um, the one year devotional journal. Oh, so yeah. Like, yeah. Thank you. Be in the Word daily yeah. and write your thoughts. Mm. And, you know, and we're all a phone call away, mm. we're all a text away. So you know you have your village with you, your people with you, no matter where you go. That's it. So, Thank you. Rose. Yeah. So that's. Um, oh, it has, little, just, it has a little. It has a little. You guys right so much. Wow. The wow. I'll let him say what he oh, has. To let me put it <laughs> my strength and my song. I don't know. One year devotion. Look at it. How oh, awesome is that? <clears throat> I think in my life I've moved over thirty times. <laughs> And I know what it's like. And that's, don't tell me the ones I can count quickly. I've lived in many parts of the world and had to pick up and move many times. And and along the way, you pick up things. You learn about people. And I'll tell you something that happened with my daughter one time. She was like six years old, and or six or seven. And we were climbing the highest hill in, in Anaheim Hills. There were no trails. We had to go hand over fist. We were watching out for rattlesnakes, and I was teaching her how to look out for dangerous things, and she loved doing that. And on the halfway up the hill, I said, Christina, we're having an adventure. Mm -hmm. And then I said, Christina, what is an adventure? Mm -hmm. She stops, and she thinks, and she said, Daddy, an adventure is when you go exploring and you don't know what's going to happen next. And that's what it is. <clears throat> Life is an adventure. We go exploring. We don't know as much as we think we do. We don't know what's going to happen next. We never know for sure. We envision something. We picture it in our head. And we expect it. And we go around the corner and it's not there. We expect that that new car is going to have a certain feel for a certain amount of time. And then we get a ding on it. We expect that that relationship is going to look a certain way and feel a certain way. And then we discover that we're both made of clay. Our expectations form pictures. And if we wait before we form those pictures and let there be a little bit more of mystery, <coughs> we won't get disappointed expectations. We'll accept the thing that comes because as part of the adventure, we don't know what's going to happen next. And <clears throat> I would give you both two words of encouragement <clears throat> they're an admonishment and an encouragement and the first word is patience nothing in life works properly without patience the farmer has to wait for the seed to germinate the cook has to wait for the pot to boil the um, the workman has to wait for the paint to dry you have to wait for the delivery to get there you have to wait for your spouse to finally learn something. <laughs> you have to wait for yourself to come and learn something. Yeah. It's always the other one that we need to be patient with, but we need to be patient with ourselves. And we need to trust that the other will be patient with us. Because part of life is just being patient through the things that don't turn out like we expect, that contain mystery. We can't sweep the mystery away. We can't shovel it away. We can't just paint a nice picture and it's gone. It just stays a mystery. It's still a murky picture. It might have beautiful light shining through it. Then sometimes it comes to shape and there it is. A tree we never expected we'd see. And if our expectations are not too invested in the future, but we're more willing to be patient and see what comes at times, then the picture is beautiful and unexpected. So patience is important. And the Bible says in, in patience, possess your souls. We don't hold our, our soul together unless we're patient. We'll get, we'll fly off the handle, we'll worry, we'll fret. We're not supposed to fret. And patience is the answer. And how do you get patience? Pray for it, so God will give you things that you have to be patient with, right? 